Hi everyone, this is Ashley with CT Mina Digitals. I'm going to do a tutorial to show you how to use the um, Pink Goddess digital backdrops uh, from my Etsy shop. I have open my um, photo of a model that I'm going to use and the backdrop that I want to use from the collection. Um, so I'm just going to start by going to my subject image, going to my quick selection tool and clicking select subject up at the top. And then using my plus and minus selection tools up here, I'm going to zoom in and make sure that every part of my image that I want selected is selected and then it doesn't have any parts selected that I don't want selected. Um, this, you want to make sure that all of your subject is selected, but if you select a little bit more, that's fine because you can always get rid of it later. Um, lace gowns can be a little hard because the lace doesn't like to select at the end at the edges very well um, i don't select these little tiny parts of hair down here because um i don't want my image to look i don't want it to look blocky when i paste it in Okay, and then I'm going to go up to edit and copy and edit and paste into my, onto my digital backdrop. Now, first I want to flip her because even though um, it, this image, this digital backdrop would be um, used better if the subject was completely backlit. I didn't really have a perfect subject for this image, but um, I am going to, I could put her on this side of the digital, but I can't really size her how I want in the image. So I'm going to flip her or I could flip the digital backdrop, but I am going to flip this for now. This way, um, this angle looks a little, a bit more realistic here. Okay. So I have my lighting. That's one of the most important things. Make sure the lighting matches. Um, as you can see, like this little moon lantern up here, the light is falling on that side. So th that's the only reason I'm, one of the reasons I'm doing that too, is just to flip her. It just looks more natural. Um, and then I'm going to create a layer mask on my subject. I'm going to go over to my brush, soft brush at 100% opacity, black, make it a little bit smaller, and I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to brush off parts of the backdrop that got copied from the initial image that I don't want in this one. Clean up the edges if there's anything sticking out. If you mess up, you just go over and switch your brush to white and brush it back on. Um, I'm not going to spend, I'm not going to make this perfect because I just want to show, um, so everybody kind of gets the gist of it, but I don't want to, for tutorial purposes, I don't want to waste too much time doing this. Okay, so this part of her dress right here, <clears throat> as you can see from this part of the image, it stopped right here. Um, so I'm just going to make it look as if it's just a little bit shorter, make my brush a little bit bigger, and have it end rounded off there. And this plant here, I'm going to have look as if it's laying over her dress or so her dress is kind of tucked into that area there. Okay, get rid of this little part right here. Okay. All right, so now her, she's, she's pretty 
cool compared to um, the warmness of the backdrop. So I'm just going to go up to my color balance adjustment. You can also go up to um, image adjustments and do it from there as well. Um, but I'm, so I'm going to add color balance and I'm going to click this right here to create a clipping mask. So it just goes to her and not the backdrop. And I'm going to slide to the yellow a bit. And I'm going to slide to the red a bit. And before and after, as you can see, that made her a lot warmer and it matches the backdrop a lot better now. Um, I am going to, if you zoom in a little, um, the shadows in the backdrop are a bit deeper than the shadows that are on her. And the way I correct that is I usually just go to my subject and go to my burn tool on shadows. Um, I play around with different exposures, but I typically have it on about like 20 some percent and just add a little bit more shadows in there. Now I'm going to go back to her layer mask because she does have a lace gown on and it is see-through. So I'm going to go to my black brush again, and I'm going to do it at about 15% opacity. And I'm going to lightly brush on just the part that we would be able to see through. Make sure you don't get it on their legs or anything like that. Um, and as you can see now, you can see the background behind her as you would be able to um, if it were true. See, that got on her leg a little bit. So I'm going to select back or click back to my white at 100%. I'm going to brush her leg back on there because obviously you wouldn't be able to see through her leg. Okay. Um, now I want, so this is another part that's really important in doing digital backdrops. I see a lot of people leave the back background completely in focus and it would not look like that if you were shooting with a camera, a professional camera. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer of the background. I'm going to go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm not going to add a ton. I usually do about three. Um, if you want, you can you think about like what lens you want to, it would, you would want it to look like you're shooting with. Like I could actually, I think I am going to add a little bit more, maybe five here. Press OK and then go ahead and create a layer mask and black brush. And I'm going to brush that blur off of the field that she is standing on because that would be in focus. And I'm going to make this plant in focus a little bit more because it's kind of on the same plane as her. I'm actually going to do the same to some of these flowers. And you can lower the opacity on this too if you don't want the flowers to be as in focus. And again, I would take more time doing this, but for tutorial's sake, I want to show how to do it, but not take too much time. And there's other ways you can add blur. This is just the way I choose to do it. But pretty much everything that's kind of on the same plane as her, I, I want in focus. These flowers, like this one you could make in focus a little bit more, this one. Um, but those are kind of pushed back. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I can merge these, the two background layers together. And now I'm going to create a new layer above the background layer. I'm going to change it to multiply blending mode. I'm going to zoom in again. And I'm going to grab a shadow on this pink rug right here. So I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to click a shadow in there. Smaller, soft brush. I'm going to start at 100% opacity and I'm just going to do a thin line along the bottom of her dress here to create that shadow. I did a little bit too much there, so I'm going to create a layer mask on that and with a black brush. I'm going to brush it right back off a little bit. Click back on the layer. Again, added a little bit too much, so I'm going to switch to black and brush it off a little. And then if I zoom out, that's a little dark. So I started 100 so I can just lower the opacity to kind of what looks good. 
and that's good. So I'm going to create another layer. I like to do my shadows in different layers so I can tweak them. Multiply blending mode. I'm going to do my bigger brush this time. I'm going to do her shadow on the floor. Um, but I'm going to make it subtle. It kind of already looks like there is a shadow right there, but I'm just going to brush in a little bit more. Create a layer mask, and I'm going to brush off a little bit. And then I'm going to lower that opacity quite a bit. I do not want it to be, I want it to be very subtle because there's a lot of light in this room, so the shadows aren't too harsh. Um, go back to my layer mask. I'm going to brush it off quite a bit on the rug. I'm going to start at a lower opacity, maybe like 54. Just brush a little bit. I might not even want any of that shadow on there. Yeah, very, very little. Because <clears throat> there's already shadow, good shadow on that rug. Okay, so now you could be done. Um, her dress matches with the background. If I wanted to maybe like make her dress a little bit different color, actually take that back. There's still a lot of coolness the blues right here in the dress. So I'm just going to create a layer above her. There's already a clipping mask because I did it between these layers. Um, but if there wasn't, you could just right click and um, create clipping mask. It would say, I'm going to change that to color blending mode. Make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to do it at 100% opacity. I'm going to select a pink. Sometimes you got to play around with it to get the right pink that you want. I don't like that either. You can just keep selecting until you kind of find what pink you want. Here we go. That's better. And then I'm going to lower the opacity until I'm happy with it. It was subtle, but it took some of those blues away, which looks better. <clears throat> okay, so sometimes, as, as I said, you could be done at this point, but sometimes if there's really um, harsh lines or around, I like to use my blur tool and just kind of go around the edge, very, very edge of the subject and add some blur especially if I add a lot of blur to the background because that just helps them blend in, especially down at the bottom of their dress, areas that wouldn't be as in focus as like her face and her hair. <clears throat> and I also want to show you a trick that I use. It's more so if I have women that have um, curly hair, hers is pretty straight, <clears throat> excuse me, and slicked back. Um, so I typically, I wouldn't touch her hair here, but a trick I like to use is I will create another layer above the background. I'll take a brush at about three and I will hold down my alt key and I'll select a color of her hair and I will kind of just add some strays in there. Like this is only if you have like a copy and paste that looks like, man, I wish she like had a little bit of fly away in there and it didn't look like so copy and pasted. Um, if you have a different tone of hair, you need to select that color again with Alt. Um, this is a horrible job that I'm doing right now, but I'm just kind of doing it to show what I mean here. Like I said, I usually do this with like curly hair. Kind of add those in and then go up to your filter and blur, Gaussian blur, and um, kind of go make it go up until it kind of looks like she has a little bit more volume to her hair there. And then you can play around with the opacity too. Um, it doesn't really look that good here. I, I had a um, woman that had an afro that I was editing the other day and I used a lot of that um, when I use a digital backdrop because it works a lot better for um, those types of scenarios. But that's a way to kind of add in flyaways or a little volume to the hair without using like getting like hair overlays or something off of Etsy. Um, so I'm going to delete that because I don't want that here. But um, that's it. I'm happy with this. Um, the light on her looks okay. Like I said, it's not perfect because it, it's not com coming completely from the back. Um, but you could add all kind. You could have more curves if she needs to be um, lighter or darker, which maybe 
Yeah, maybe I did want to add a little bit of shadow. And then I would go back to her and grab my dodge tool on mid-tones and just add a little bit more to her face. That actually looks better. Okay, so before and after. If you have any questions, actually, God, I always do this, guy. sorry. Her dress down here is pretty dark compared to the carpet, which is like the same color. So I would actually come down here, glad I caught that, and add um, some mid-tones in there until the tone kind of matched her carpet. That looks way better. Sometimes I don't catch stuff, so I'm glad I caught that. Um, if you have any questions, you can message me on Etsy. If you're a studio photographer, I would love for you to join my group on Facebook. It is linked in the description. Um, definitely if you have any questions regarding like, um, it's hard to say because people don't watch the tutorial first and they just, or, and then they don't message me on Etsy and then they go and leave like a bad review because they weren't happy with something. Please always reach out to me. If this is the only tutorial you watch, if you make any other purchases in the future, just keep that in mind. Um, and that's it.